Welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunting, brought to you by ElkGrows.com, with your host, elk hunting coach, Joe Gillick. You want to hunt elk? They live to hunt elk. Their goal is to share with you what they have learned grinding it out for over 35 seasons, doing what they love. So come on into camp and set a spell. Welcome to Blue Collar Elk Hunters. Welcome, everybody. I'm Joe Gillia, and this is your Insights Edition of Blue Collar Elk Hunting, where we want to talk and learn about all things elk. On today's show, just what does it really mean to be elk hunting partners in the most successful, beneficial, and enjoyable way? What does it take? What defines a solid partner? What about the unsaid aspects, the responsibilities, the relationship, the good, the great, and the hard? Well, y'all, to help us dive into the conversation of elk hunting partners, we have the Elk 101 dynamic duo themselves with us today, Corey Jacobson and Donnie Drake. Donnie, Corey, welcome, guys. Appreciate you having here. Hey, thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. Yeah. And what a great topic. This is, uh, this is something that we hold dear and near to our hearts. So thanks for uh, giving us the opportunity to talk about hunting partners. And near and dear to my heart. Um, I, I had mentioned to you just before here, I've had a hunting partner for, this will be our 40th season, Leroy Chavis. We call him Chav. And this is why watching you guys and having seen over the years a lot of y'all's videos, the things that I look for are different than what other people look for. You know, the elk cutting, of course, that's the entertainment side of it. But the relationships, the memories, the ripple effect that you've had with your kids, the way um, Donnie and yourself and y'all's relationship there, how it affects not just the hunting world, but your families. There's, there's so much that takes place with all of that. So when I watch this and I see some of the things that that I know – my hunting partner and I have gone through, and I see some of those things. I, I don't know how much people really understand what it really means to be a great elk hunting partner. I mean, there's got to be so much that works within that, you know, the personalities, the, um, the commitment, uh, the unselfishness. Uh, and sometimes the selfishness, <laughs> because, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you know, I always tease with Chav, man. I'm like, bud, man, once I'm locked in, if you're not going to get it done, <laughs> you better, you better make it happen. Right. Yep. <laughs> so, that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you guys on here because having seen some things, some of the things that, that we have been privy to, to see in y'all's relationship, some of the difficulties that either one of you get into that the other one either bails out or helps with or feels for, understands and still commits to that. That is what this is all about. That's special. Those are the memories. Those are the relationships. That's really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut my trap in. I want you guys to talk a little bit about this relationship, you know, the, the story behind it. Um, and probably at what point or what moment kind of, you know, that, that kind of aha thing, like, yeah, I think, I think we can continue to do this. I, I don't know if it happened with you that way. Um, but I, I imagine there's some things that kind of measured that. So, how did it all begin? <laughs> I think well, we're still in the courtship phase. <laughs> <laughs> Honeymoon's over by now, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we, uh, I worked at, at the same company Donnie's still at. And after five years there, uh, I transferred into a, a new department. And it was a department Donnie was in. And I just, Donnie was, uh, I don't know a drafter, I guess. And so I would lay out circuit boards and take them into him and he would actually do the work and, and, uh, took it back, you know, one of the first few days I was there and he had a picture of, I think it was a big buck. I think it was Robert Arledge's big yep. Idaho buck. And I saw that and said, Oh, do you know Robert? And he's like, yeah. And so we talked and, you know, found out he hunted. And of course in the, in the technology world, there's not a lot of hunters. And so you, <laughs> you quickly are, are attracted to like-minded individuals and, you know, it's like, Hey, you want to go grab lunch and talk hunting. And so that was how we met. That was uh, kind of the foundation. I think our first uh, hunting experience together was a late 
uh, mule deer hunt, if I remember right, archery mule deer hunt, and uh, yes. went on that. And I, you know, from there, I think the next season, what really uh, got us going was my area that I'd normally hunted for this past several years was on fire. And Donnie said, hey, I've got an area I've always got into elk. I've never killed one there, but you're welcome to go there, try that. And so went up there and, and hunted and, um, you know, that's been, gosh, what was that? 20 years ago, 15 years ago, <laughs> I don't remember. It's been, it's been quite a while, but yeah. um, seemed like I killed an elk early there. And then I don't think it was that year that, that Donnie, that you killed an elk, was it? I think it was no, the it next was season. Next year. Okay. So, you know, I mean, from the beginning, Donnie unselfishly gave up a hunting spot, which you just, that's, hunting yeah. spots are sacred and you don't just give those up yeah. to anybody. And so there was a, a feeling of respect of uh, just understanding how sacred an area is and that Donnie would openly give that up. Uh, and so then the next season we went in there and I had drawn an Arizona elk tag and I don't think I had a. I did have an Idaho tag. We went yeah. back up in there. <laughs> opening morning. Yeah, opening morning and uh, shot a bull. And then the next weekend went up with Donnie because he had uh, unselfishly again offered to go to Arizona and film for me uh, and take you know his vacation time for that. So anyway, we went up and I was able to call in a bull for Donnie, first elk that he killed with a bow. Then he went down and filmed for me in Arizona. And I think that really that season was kind of the, the moment I I would think for me anyway. Yeah. And family units also were his family, the way he is with his family and everything was just, uh, I don't know, everybody calls us brothers, but <laughs> we're, we could be brothers. <laughs> yeah, it's just been and a it's good we do. We get a lot of people that say, you know, the Donnie and Corey, the brothers, I love watching the brothers hunt and, and we're not brothers, you know, we right. didn't even know each other till 15 years ago, or I don't, what year was it? 2006, Probably 2005, 2006. Five or six. So, yeah. 15, 20 years, somewhere in there. And it, it goes by quick, huh? Very. Donnie, <laughs> Donnie looks a lot older than he did back I then. I know. <laughs> I feel a lot older too. <laughs> well, and you know, especially after he drug your butt into Alaska and stuck you in a tent for how many days to, you know. <laughs> I, did, I didn't have to drag him. I mean, he's. <laughs> oh. I, I think he meant the <laughs> other way. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, you know, I think the, the word that I kept hearing there, and that's the one thing that with Chav um, is that that word unselfish. You know, uh, I think one of the things that first for me when I saw things that that were occurring with you guys was when Donnie gave up an opportunity to hunt to hunt with your boy and and to help you guys out with that hunt. And, you know, that really rings out um, th that really speaks to the relationship and and how somebody is willing to step aside to see somebody else be successful because, you know, I mean, early on, and I talk about this, and I've heard you talk about this with your kids, uh, Corey, and that, you know, as a young hunter, I was a very selfish hunter, you know, selfish with my time, wanting to really be out there and try to, you know, put an elk on the ground. I, I was very intense, very serious about that. But as we get a little bit older, we start to take a whole lot more enjoyment out of seeing other people have those moments right yeah. and you know I, I i see that in you too and the other thing i see is the caring like when one person gets injured or when one person gets ill or when another person's having a hard time or somebody's got a bull down and willing to go how far to the vehicle to get it around so we can get there or we're going to dive off here and come out at point b you know at a certain time and day you know and to really take that grind i mean you guys have earned this relationship i believe because of the grind that you're willing to both put through you know, yeah, I'm, I'm totally willing to put Donnie through a grind. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, and it, and it is. And I, you know, the unselfish part of it is something I learned 
you know, the hard way, I think we all do the, you mentioned it, you're young, you're so driven, you're so hungry to succeed that you lose focus of everything other than that for a little bit. And I think it's important to go through that because that helps you recognize, you know, when you come out the other side, I think we all go through it. Um, me more than Donnie, for sure. Donnie from the beginning has been unselfish and just, you know, happy to be there and happy to tag along and do whatever. He's the guy that jumps out of the truck and starts setting up a tent as soon as we get there, you know, just the one that just dives in and, and does the work. And so when you're around something like that, it's contagious and you see other people who are naturally unselfish, it makes you want to be better. It makes you want to be unselfish. And, and you feel like, you know, I felt like I've owed Donnie a, a you know, there's a debt there that will never be fully paid because of all that he does. I feel like I owe him that and I need to continually give to him. And, you know, it's almost a, we argue about who's shooting first and it's not right. like it used to be where I'm shooting first. It's like, no, I'm not carrying my bow today. You're, you're shooting first, you know? And, yeah. and I think that's our, our biggest argument anymore is no, it's you, it's your, it's your day. No, you, you, it's your day. And so that when, when you get to that point, um, it's way more enjoyable. I think success is, is magnified. I think the, the experience is multiplied and, you know, taken to a level that you, you can't get. And it's, it's something for me, you know, I hunted solo for, for a long time. I hunted with partners, you know, that, that, we're both calling, we're both trying to sneak in on the bowl and it almost becomes a competition of who can get in the right place, who can cut the other guy off. And ultimately we ended up spooking every elk we ever tried calling in and just weren't successful. And, and when you realize when your hunting partner is successful, you as a team are successful. And you talk, you know, you're a basketball coach. We're a basketball coach for 30 years. I coach basketball. Donnie's done a lot of coaching and, and youth stuff. And you just recognize that success as a team is success for everyone on that team and it's way better when you have somebody to celebrate a success with than when you try to you know just celebrate it by yourself when you go home after you celebrate by yourself it's it's deflating you know there's there's just an empty feeling when you have somebody that you've shared it with it's uh it never gets old no absolutely yeah. and and donnie you know, you had, you're originally from Nevada and you had done a lot of hunting prior to, um, probably had other hunting partners at the time. So, uh, what was that journey like for you from going through that? Were you ever just the solo hunter? Were you always a partner type hunter? You know, um, how did that well, go for you? It was always a partner type and it was always a family hunt to I mean, the family would get out. We'd all have tags and go set up a base camp and go and ride around in a truck <laughs> and and uh hunt that way because you need to cover a lot of ground down there then when i moved up here it, i had another guy that i would go up hunting with but a lot of that was just driving around seeing if they could find some grouse and elk hunt for an hour in the morning hour in the evening and <laughs> right <laughs> Drink, drink beer and listen to a Monday night football game on the mountain <laughs> and not get into a lot of elk and then going up with Corey and finding a different way to hunt and actually learn the animals. You know, that's the biggest thing I've learned is I've learned elk and how to hunt them. So the rest of it, just, it's easy to be a friend and it's easy to, go out and do the hunts and at some point you have to kill something <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you you kind of lost out on the family part of it and and brought that with you and it's almost you know you have your pseudo brother basically there that you guys get to share those with and right yeah definitely i mean it, back in the beginning i mean that was one of the things like when we we're first going out we went out on an antelope hunt and mm -hmm. we we both we brought both of our boys and we sat in separate ground blinds 100 yards from each other and wrestled our boys trying to keep them quiet waiting for antelope to come in and <laughs> <laughs> that i mean that that makes it enjoyable and it wasn't so much about the hunt it was about the experience and having the kids out there with us right 
Yeah. Well, there's even that phase, like, when you guys first started hunting together, kind of like that, you know, that kind of feel-out phase. Yeah, we get along, kumbaya and everything, and still trying to learn. And then it gets to where it's starting to be more of the brother phase. Like, we have our group. We have the Elk Bros crew. There's there's six of us, and we've all known each other now for a number of years. And we've gone from that being nice to each other all the time to <laughs> <laughs> what brothers do, man. You know, like, uh, like I, you know, you were saying, uh, yeah, I'll throw Donnie through the grind. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's, it's, you know, I mean, just like within a family, there's different personalities. Right. And Donnie is the, the calm one that, you know, he's the older brother that's calm. I'm the younger one that's running 90 miles an hour. And, you know, I'm, I'm the one that's, uh, Donnie will step on a branch and I'll turn around and glare at him <laughs> and I'll step on six branches and Donnie will just anything. smile and not say anything, you <laughs> right, know? And yeah. so, um, you know, those, those personalities, I think compliment for sure, because there are times I am so driven and so intense that if it was somebody else just like that, not that Donnie's not driven or not intense, but his personality, he's just more calm and, and thinks through things. Mm -hmm. If we we're both the same, we'd be button heads continually. Yeah. And, you know, I would snap at Donnie for breaking a branch and he would snap right back. So, well, you just broke six of them. And instead he's like, yeah, Corey's just a moron and he breaks more branches than me and, and recognizes that. And we go yeah. on up the mountain. So, you know, there's, yeah. there's definitely personalities definitely complement. And I think that's one of the things in, in a hunting partner is it's going to be tough to have two people that, that want to, you know, be the leader or that right. want to, you know, whatever it is. And I think, you know, again, not that Donnie's not a leader. He just lets me be the leader because he knows that, you know, I can lead, he can support. And when it's time for him to, to take over, he doesn't even, you know, there's not even a hesitation. He, you know, he leads. And I just think you look at any team and you've got to have different well, roles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And when those roles, when you know your responsibility and you do your responsibility to the best of your ability, um, that's when the team really sees success. And so I think we just naturally, based on our personalities, our experiences, we fall into those uh, vital roles naturally, and we're happy to, to contribute. And so it's not about um, two individuals out there trying to outdo each other or trying to uh, fill each other's roles. We, we understand what it takes to be successful in our group, and there's no ego there's no attention grabbing it's just hey we're here to hunt because we love hunting because we love the experience of of being out there together and when we share in that that's a success and it really i mean it is we we love to fill tags but just those experiences and that adventure is is really the success and it's amazing when you look at it that way how the other success just comes so much more easily yeah 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 it you know, when you talked about that, I, I was thinking back as as to the fact that, you know, uh, what's the age difference between you guys? I think Donnie's like 16 years older than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Body wise, yes. <laughs> well, dude, every time I see man, you're like putting yourself through it somehow, man. I mean, you're either rolling on a bike or I mean, you just find a way to to, to let life hit you in the face every now and then that's all at Corey's direction to the film <laughs> editor yep. to put it together only show those kind of things he never <laughs> shows me walking and carrying logs and stuff yep <laughs> everybody always says you know we love your guys's content because it's real yeah. and uh you, you know you show the failures and well sometimes we have to create failures for <laughs> and that's what yeah. keeps it real <laughs> well but, i never got an answer what's the age difference <laughs> i think it's four years four years Okay. Yeah. I actually think Don, you're about four years um, younger than I am. I'm 60 now. And uh, so uh, just looking at kind of like, uh, I, I know that you kind of, the date when you went to school and stuff like that. So yeah. I was kind of gauging about that. But uh, Chab is actually, my honey partner is 10 years my senior. And so he's actually 70 now. And the, the funny thing about that is, is our, our makeup is a lot like your two. I'm the the aggressive loud you know pound and chav is the quiet 
uh, ninja type, man. He's just, uh, he doesn't say a whole lot. When he says it, you better listen because if he's going to speak up, there's a reason that he's speaking up and you had better listen to that. But, you know, we've had those things that have occurred that people don't realize how, and I don't, I don't you know, you don't realize how important that friendship is sometimes until some things that come up that kind of define that, you know, and, and we've had, we had a real scary event one time, you know, Chav, um, uh, when he was younger, he had a heart attack, and it's not because of his condition. That's a crazy thing. And uh, and this is to go to all of our listeners out there. You can be in the best of health. You can look like any of us here, and you can have a heart attack. Um, he's a he's a cross country runner. He's a Hall of Fame cross country runner from uh, University of Eastern New Mexico here, and. Always running, always in shape, co-coached with me in track and field, distance runner, and ends up having a heart attack. So, because he ended up with a clogged artery. That's all it was, you know, one of those what they call the widow makers. Well, we're actually leaving out of Elk Camp after being successful. We're heading back home, and, you know, Chav's the type that... He's opposite of Donnie. He's not like this wild dude. He doesn't want to jump on a horse and he doesn't want to do certain things on, on bikes and stuff. And, and he was going to ride the four wheeler out in front of me and I'm taking, you know, the, the, the truck with the trailer and going behind him. And I'm like, dude, don't get too far ahead of me. I, you know, I want to make sure I see you as we're going out of here. What does he do? He pulls a daggum Donnie map. He just goes crazy on it. <laughs> goes flying out of there. And I'm like, God dang, man. You know, it's like unlike Chav, you know. So as I'm going, I'm, I come up and I see something in the road to the side, tilted off. And when I come up there, he has... He has caught a rut and gone into it, and I see his leg sticking out of the back of the tire where it got wedged between the tire and the mm -hmm. bike, and he's hanging over the handlebars unconscious, and I think this guy's had a heart attack on me, and his leg is just peeled on one side, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, man, I, I you know, that was an incident. <laughs> you know, you hate to call home and go, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you have those moments like that where you realize how important those people are to you, right? You know, and you're going to, it doesn't matter. The hunt isn't important anymore. It has nothing to do with that, right? So, you know, um, on your Alaskan trip, you know, Don, you got sick while you were up there, you know, and, you know, in some really, really tough conditions. And, that had to be, I mean, everybody sees what's on the video part of it, right? But what's the dynamic of really what's going on with that and in the mindsets of you guys? Well, for me, I, I'm, we're in Alaska and we're seven miles away from an animal. And it's a, a lot of animals, unlike none that we've packed out before. And... I'm not going to be able to help. And it's putting a lot of extra effort on John and Corey to get it out. So I'm going to be a hindrance. And it, it was just, that was my biggest thing was that I'm letting somebody else down in a extreme time of need. That's a partner right there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Donnie, you know, come to find out, he's got kidney stones. Wow. He's two weeks uh, from testing positive for COVID. Right. Uh, literally to the day we had, you know, 14 days he had to, after a positive test where he could fly. It was the day that we flew. Uh, so he's, you know, beat up from that and lacking energy. Uh, we get back to camp and he's like, I can't go. I've got fever. I've got chills. I just, I'm, and when Donnie says I can't go, it's bad. Like, you know that. <laughs> he didn't just see the size of the elk. He's like, uh, I got to fake something here. It's, you know, he's, he's sick and he's got a bad knee that he's been nursing all year. And so, you know, there's a lot of, of things that came together right there. So the mental part of him being stuck, anybody being stuck in a tent when you're healthy and it's just pouring rain after three or four days of just laying in a tent, you want to just, you know, <laughs> climb off the cliff there and, and uh, so the, the mental toughness that it takes to endure that 
the emotional toughness that it takes to to know that man i'm letting somebody down and i want to be there more than anything and i just can't and you know if i go there i'm probably going to get hurt or i'm going to you know cause more issues it's going to cause more of a, a concern for hunting partners you know it's just all of that that you can't you can't capture in a video no and, absolutely not yeah and so i'm sitting there thinking i've got to go take care of this elk i don't care if i have to pack it myself it's got to get done but at the same time we've got to leave donnie on the side of the mountain seven miles away while we're off doing that and so you know there's a part of us that's worried about donnie yeah how that stressful was that Corey? uh you know i mean it's i didn't know what was wrong with him right. and so you know every we're luckily we have uh, in reaches and we're able to keep in touch throughout the day and just check in and say, Hey, you doing okay. And he's like, yeah, I'm no better, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm surviving. Don't worry about me. Uh, so, I mean, there, there is, there's a lot that goes into it because if it's not a real hunting partner and you don't have that relationship, you don't care as much, Right. but you know, this is somebody that, that we care about and he's going through a tough time. And so we're experiencing that to a, obviously a lesser degree uh, but Donnie's worried he's letting us down. We're worried we've left him alone while he's not feeling good. And so there's a there's definitely a mental and emotional side to to having a hunting partner. Yeah. Grinders tuning in. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Elk Hunting Podcast. Our goal is to share our knowledge and help you flatten that learning curve so that you too can have some of the very same incredible experiences that have given all of us here at Elk Bros a lifetime of memories. If you like what you hear or see, you can get all of this information plus so much more from our Base Camp Elk Hunting Training Camp, the first in a series of online courses from our Blue Collar Elk Academy. Our Base Camp Training Camp allows me to use my coaching style and share almost 40 years of elk hunting experiences successfully hunting elk on public lands as well as over 20 years guiding hunters of all ages and experience levels. This course will be like nothing you have ever experienced in concept and structure using success-based coaching techniques that will elevate your confidence and skill sets. Our camp will prepare you specifically from that final moment most in your control, those final minutes or seconds the elk is in front of you, backwards through each step and level, allowing you to see, visualize, understand, and relate every coaching point to what lies ahead, the next step, the next thought process, the next success. Because y'all, you've already been there. You know what it looks like. By tapping my 30 years of teaching and coaching experience, our camps are developed considering multiple learning modes with text, visuals, audio, as well as video. And Base Camp will benefit those new to elk hunting all the way to the 10 to 15 year vet. So if you are looking for that one thing to help you fill that tag this year, invest in the most important piece of equipment there is, you and your elk hunting knowledge. You can find the Blue Collar Elk Hunting Academy and the Base Camp Training Camp at elkbros.com. That's E-L-K-B-R-O-S dot com. Keep dreaming of the screaming, believing in achieving, and most of all, keep grinding. We were on a hunt in 20, uh, 2019 that actually was a huge defining moment for Chav and I, because, um, something was going on with him, you know, like you said, we just didn't know. And, oh, we have these guys from Venezuela. We call them the Venezuela mafia, uh, Manano and Luis and our crew, just incredible human beings and characters to the bone. And, uh, these guys always make a meal, a special meal that has seafood in it on the first night. And we eat that. And the next day, Chab wakes up and he's got hives all over his body. He can hardly breathe, has never had a reaction to seafood in his life. And yeah. there was just something wrong. So at that point, I'm figuring I'm taking this guy to the hospital, right? We're driving out of the mountain. I'm taking him down. And, uh, you know, you guys are, you can handle this. You know, I had to get those guys to step up. I was actually kind of guiding them at the time, right? I've been a guide, elk hunt guide for like 25 years. And this is one of those deals where you start as clients and become best friends over years, right? And um, 
And I told I told Luis, you know, you guys, and, and they're worried about Chab. They're seeing him, and they're like, we can't hunt. we got to go down with you. And Chab was the first one to step up and say, look, no, man, you're next up. We got this. You're next up. Take care of it. I'll be all right, but you're not going to quit because of me. You know, uh, Joe, get me down. We'll be okay. We'll be back, blah, blah, blah. You know, and it's just, it's the same thing with athletes. When you have athletes you know, every year it happens, Corey, you see it that the seniors graduate and then and the other ones are like that first because they looked up to them and they, you know, they saw them as their guide. Like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to survive this now? And it's like, you're next up, right? You know, you do that. You step up, you improve your game and and come to find out, this is why this was such a defining moment. Had this not happened, had he not had that seafood he wouldn't have been in the emergency room and gotten the scan that showed that he had cancer. And um, it, it started a, a series of stuff that we had to go through, but uh, he actually lost the ability to walk for a while. And, you know, Chad was in the mountains last year with us on a hunt. He had to hunt in a blind, and he had to use sticks to get 300 yards to get in that blind, but he was there, you know, and everybody did their part because of the group we care about each other enough to make sure we all have that right that we have those uh moments and that we're able to share those and now he's walking without sticks we'll see what happens this season we're gonna i'm gonna challenge him a little bit more you know (laughs) but you know that's what i see in other hunting buddies and partners and the camaraderie and that's what we try to portray and and not really portray but show that this is what's so critical this is what really defines what we do this is what makes the memories this is what makes it special right so um i that's I really wanted to have you guys on here as for a couple things. Number of reason to as a tip of the hat to both you guys for what you do in educating the community, but also in a lot of other ways because of what you demonstrate through your partnership, the unselfishness, the caring for your kids and uh, uh, for the other people that you go out and do things for. Um, disabled people out there, people that have done like make-a-wish type things. And also, Donnie, as a tip of the hat to you and like my hunting partner, because Chad's the same way as you, man. He's the person that's going to be the last one to say, well, what about me, right? The last person. And it's people like you and Chav that make people like me and Corey um, feel like we could, you know, do anything sometimes you know yeah and and a lot of that the type a type c personality stuff like that for me i need i need that extra push that Corey can give me and then i am that extra pullback for him that keeps him from running off too far (laughs) running off a cliff (laughs) (laughs) but but for those personality differences and it's just that's who who each person is and you have two type a people are not going to be very well suited to be hunting together because there's always only one person that's going to be right and it's not the other person (laughs) so but yeah it's it's just a matter of getting along and i mean we're all a you know, the hunting community is, we're all family, but there's a lot of fighting amongst family and <laughs> we try and keep that away from hunting camp at least. <laughs> and Donnie's good, you know, about, there's just no drama. And right. that's the, that's the great thing. It's just, there's no talking negative about anything, not, not even just people, but just anything. I mean, there's no negativity brought in and that just makes you experience so much better because it's it's really easy to get negative on hunting on you know the the state of the world whatever it is absolutely there's so much negativity and so many people are focused on that that it you know if you go to hunting camp the last thing that i want is 
something negative, you know, and it just, it brings everything down. And so Donnie is just one of those that he just doesn't say anything bad about anything, about anybody, about anything. And so it keeps it positive. His dad jokes are the lamest, which, you know, the, <laughs> that's what the, you know, we all laugh at that. And it's, you know, it, it, there's just so much fun at hunting camp, but outside that, you know, we, we have a great time, no matter what we're doing. Right. And, yeah. and I think for me, our family, our whole family loves Donnie, you know, it's, we don't call him uncle Donnie, which, you know, would be pretty natural, but it's just Donnie. He's a part of our family right. and he's the first one to say, Hey, when are we taking Sam out? You know, and you had mentioned yeah. it a few years ago, Sam had a day off from school and Donnie's like, we're taking Sam out tomorrow. And I'm like, we haven't even filled your tag yet. And he's like, Sam doesn't have school. We're hunting with Sam. Right. You know, and so for me, I'm almost losing focus of, of that sometimes that I've got to help Donnie be successful. He's hunted with me for seven days to fill my tag. Now he has a tag to fill and he's still willing to sacrifice that to hunt with my kids. And, you know, he came up last year. I texted him, said, Sam just shot a bull. We're going to, to recover it. And he said, I'll be there in two hours. You know, it wasn't even a question of I've got other things to do. He was there. He showed up after dark, hiked in in the dark and helped us pack it out until one in the morning. So, I mean, just all those things are what create relationships, whether it's a hunting partnership, whether it's a friendship, whether it's a marriage, whatever, yeah. it's willing to sacrifice for each other and put others before you. And, and Donnie's just, uh, I mean, that's, that's who he is. And that, that's one thing that we try to tell people is, is hunting's just an interface. It's, it's just a way of learning lessons in life, and it and it applies to all things in our life. You know, I'm sure that that all of these lessons you guys have learned, you pass on to your kids, you pass on to your players, you pass on to other people, and and sometimes you get a little ticked at people that are should be at a certain age and get it, and they just don't you know yeah. um and 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 that's where you're talking about like i don't do drama either you know i if i'm there's only so many septembers in the windshield right and there's only so many days in our life and to spend that you know uh dwelling on negativity or or letting people create that type of environment i just don't have time for that man so i think that let, let's ask you know because as far as for other people that are that see this, they hear this, they understand this. But there's also some things like there's the unsaid aspects. There's those understandings and unwritten codes that probably tear apart things like this. You know, you've had, Corey, you've said you've had those hunting partners. And, and Donnie, there's people that you have hunted with that... Man, it just didn't work because they just didn't get some of those things. Uh, what are some of those understandings and unwritten codes do you think that um, could make or break that partnership? I'm going to say it's that I have to fill my tag before you. I mean, that it's, we've never had that. It's like Corey said, it's usually a little bit of an argument on who's going to shoot first but if there's it should be a red flag if all right first day it's my day it's my day all day and where i get to kill the first animal and we hunt until i kill one and then we'll go after yours that's that's going to put a little conflict in between two people that are out there to do the same thing and you want the same excitement for the other person as they want for you. Unless you have the type C personality that yeah. you just can't let people just dog you all the time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and just to add to that, I think, you know, I, I read a book a few years back, ego is the enemy. Mm -hmm. And I think that the pride and ego are the biggest downfall in any relationship. And it goes right to that, that, when you put yourself in front of someone else and you know, perfect example, when you're hunting, there's going to be give and take there, there has to be in any relationship. And so we go out, it's Donnie's days to hunt and he shoots a bull right at dark or right before dark, you know, on a, on a day of a hunt when it's his day to shoot. Well, my day's the next day, 
but we spend the next day tracking his bull or going back to see, you know, if he hit and I miss out on half a day of hunting or a whole day of hunting packing. And, you know, it'd be really easy to, to get selfish there and, and all day be like, let's just, let's, let's give up, you know, let's just give up. We aren't going to find this. Let's go. And, you know, to, to be able to say, my time's going to come. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow, but I'm going to get a chance and Donnie's going to, and I know, I trust Donnie's going to do everything and more to help me be successful when it's my chance. So I'm willing to give up some to, to help him, even if it's above and beyond what, what he typically should be getting. Uh, and I, I think that's missing so much. People look at it and they're like, well, you had your chance yesterday. Today's my day. And, you know, they, I've seen hunting partners that, that fight continually and there's conflict about who kills the elk first or who kills the biggest elk. And at the end of the season, they're like, well, yeah, he killed a six point, but I would have too, if I would have got to hunt the day that he did, you know, that should have been my day. And so there's all those little things that really come down to pride and ego. And if you let go of that, uh, it's so much more in life in general is so much more Absolutely. enjoyable when you realize you know, you don't have to, you don't have to be the center of attention. Well, and there's a third player in that too, not just you too, but there's the animal. And I mean, I've even had, uh, I, I had a hunter that I was guiding that made a bad hit on an animal. And, you know, we have the next five days because we do blood and done. We have the next five days to hunt that animal. Day three, he's done, you know. So I'm still looking for that animal for another four days after that myself, even though that person's already left, because at that point, it's not about him and, and I, it's about that animal, yep. you know? So I, I, you know, when I hear about people that, and that would be the unwritten thing, you know, if I had somebody that's like, ah, you know, it's okay, <laughs> you know, without doing the due diligence, mm, I don't know that that's somebody that I want to be out there with. So. Yeah. You know, uh, there's there's that third participant in there as well. Yep, totally. No, and I just think, you know, the, the personalities, there's going to be things that annoy you, you know, and I think you just have to look past that. What a, Donnie, what about Corey annoys you, man? Oh, boy, I don't know if we have time. This, this, is, this is probably going to be a whole nother episode. <laughs> I don't, I don't. I don't see annoyances in people. I just uh -huh. try and see positives in people. And any of anything that's a negative is way outweighed by the positive. So try not to focus on them. That's a good <laughs> answer, man. Look at that. Corey's like, Phew. man, <laughs> because I don't, yeah. I don't think I've ever, I don't think Chav's ever told me no, not, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> he's, but I'd be like, dude, I, I you know, I've, I know there's times that I've almost led this guy off a cliff. That's got to sometimes just annoy the crap out of him, you know, but uh, I've never seen it, you know, and I, you know, I, I don't know that I've ever heard him say anything bad about anybody, you know, um, whereas I'm pretty quick sometimes to go, you know, no, I can do without that. You know, it's, it's not so much I want to deal with it or say anything about it. It's just like, nah, I can do it. I can do without that, I'm, you know, uh, type of person. So uh, it, I think people our age that have gone through and seen or and you've worked with other people, you've had hunting, people you've hunted with and you've had hunting partners that you kind of understand that. You kind of see that. And the cool thing about having a solid hunting partner, somebody that you're going to ride the river with, that's how we kind of describe it. I know that that person has my back. If something happens, I go down, I know I have somebody to count on. And it makes our families at home feel a lot more comfortable knowing that we have that, you know. Uh, an in-reach is great. A Zolio is great. But... It's not gonna. It's not gonna go to the truck. It's not going to help you get there. <laughs> you know, um, it's going to call in the cavalry, which sometimes, for, is a tough call to make sometimes too. You know, that's one of those tough things. So, let me ask you, um, Donnie. I'm going to ask you first, man. Um, 
what advice would you have to other people out there? And I get this all the time. We get this all the time. People that watch our show and listen to our podcast are like, man, I wish I had that. You know, I hung with these guys and they're so stubborn year after year. And you, as soon as you hear that, as soon as you hear somebody go, they're so stubborn, right away you know there's some kind of ego conflict going on there, right? Yeah. But what advice would you have for somebody that's looking for that partner to ride the river with? Uh, scouting season. If, if you can go out and scout with somebody and, I mean, we've heard everybody, all the people, there's been a lot of people meet on the internet and I got the same tag as you. Okay, let's go together. And you show up on during your actual hunt and they don't get along whatsoever. S try and do something ahead of the season to see if you are going to actually be compatible to deal with each other and find out what they're like. I mean, sitting down and having a conversation with somebody, it goes a long way as you can tell a lot about somebody pretty quick like if you're going to be able to enjoy being with them or not that's uh, good point you know because and, and one thing i've heard from people there are people that are friends outside of hunting that once they tried hunting together the guy was like um well we can be friends outside but yeah. i i really yeah. did not enjoy that guy. i mean they you know they want to leave on day three they don't have the same drive they're you know they're not willing to grind it out negativity you know all those things that you know, it's kind of like, uh, and we hate to say it, you know, but it's it's a lot like a marriage in some ways. You know, that courting thing that goes on and then, you know, you start getting in that relationship a little bit deeper and you start to find out what the, you know, the nitpicking things are and, you know, things that just don't work out and we don't talk anymore. <laughs> what about you, Corey? What would be your advice? You know, I, th I think it's like anything. If you're If you're unhappy in your job, you know, you've, you're spending a good percentage of your time at that job, and that's gonna it's gonna drag you down if you're not happy in that. Uh, if you're whatever it is, you know, if you're hunting and you're not finding elk, don't sit there and do the same thing over and over. If you've got a hunting partner that's not contributing, not just necessarily to success, but to your enjoyment of the experience don't keep going back year after year with that. I mean, that's, it's hard to do, but I mean, you just have to have a, a big boy conversation sometimes and say, listen, I don't enjoy hunting with you. <laughs> and whether it's because our personalities are different, whether it's because our hunting styles are different, you know, let's, let's figure this out, whether it's, Hey, we're going to start hunting on the same page here, or we're going to go separate ways as hunting partners, but, you know, don't get locked into something you don't enjoy or something that creates a negative experience uh, because you're afraid of hurting somebody's feelings or because, you know, and I think uh, it, it's hard. It's hard to have those conversations sometimes, but I think that as soon as you have them, there's a huge weight off your shoulders. And sometimes it's just a matter of, of talking and guys are the worst. You know, I mean, Donnie and I can drive for 12 hours to a hunt and not say a word and be totally yeah. fine. Not be like, Hey, right. well, I wonder what's wrong with him. It's just, yeah, we don't have to talk, you know, we'll hunt for 10 days together. And I'll come home and my, my wife will say, how's Donnie? And I'm like, I think he's doing good. <laughs> it's like, well, what do you mean you think he's doing good? And it's like, well, like, we didn't really talk. She's like, well, how's work going for him? I'm like, uh, I, I think it's good. He you know, didn't mention anything. <laughs> and so it's just, it up. Yeah, yeah, it's just, we're, we're, we're okay not talking, but I think there's sometimes that you have to communicate and you have to be able to say, you know, listen, this isn't working out. I know if you're not happy. I'm not happy. Let's, let's figure this out. Do we need to hunt with somebody else? Do we need to change something? What about me? Don't you like, you know, I, I recognize that I am, uh, I'm a hard personality sometimes to, to hang out with for a long time. Cause I am so intense. I'm so driven. I'm, right. you know, I just get into that mode and it's, we laugh about it now, you know, because Donnie's been able to say, you know, <laughs> there's that look Corey gives me again, you know, I stepped yeah. on a branch and he turned around and, and I recognize I make more noise than them. I just happen to be so zoned in on something. I hear something. It's like, 
where was that sound? And I turn around, it's them. And I'm like, you gotta be quiet, you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> recognize I tell myself the same thing, but it's internally. And, right. you know, our cameraman, John is, you know, he and Donnie, I think sit there and, and laugh <laughs> and put bunny ears on me as we're walking up the trail. But, you know, I, we, I do the same thing with John and they've mentioned before that, yeah, Corey gave me that look too. And they laugh about it as they're going up the trail. I'm up there just driven forward and they're back there just shaking their heads. Like there goes Corey again. And so yeah. me recognizing that not taking it personal, them recognizing, you know, that that's just Corey. That's him being so driven to, to get up the mountain or be successful. We understand that. And it's not a negative thing. We let it go because we know that, that what we're doing is far more important to, to share that time together. So I just think, don't get stuck in a, a relationship that you're not happy in. Don't get stuck in a job you're not happy in. Don't get stuck hunting in an area that's not productive. Those all kind of go together. And I think yeah. uh, when it comes to hunting partner, that's important as well. Yeah. And, and even anybody that you invite into your camp, you know, that's, that's, most people don't understand how sacred that is that, you know, if you two were to invite a third person to come into your camp or another two people to come in and share a hunt with you, how sacred that is, you know, I mean, the, the group of guys that we have together, the, the six of us that are together, um, what we all bring to the table, all different roles, all different personalities. You know, Gilbert, um, if I, I know you guys have probably never heard our podcast or anything, but Gilbert Ornelas is our is our host and he is just a bigger than life, um, loves to tell stories, exaggerate and and just makes life fun. He's just a fun person. We both have big personalities, um, but uh, but we're brothers in that we we understand each other. We each have our own roles. We understand what those roles are, and you know, in every camp, like you said, there has to be a chief, and you know, we all understand that. Um, and it, we don't even worry about that really. You know, I mean, it started out with me being everybody's guide, so that was just a natural you know, a uh, position that came with that. But what they bring to the table, um, RC and Chav and, and uh, Manana Luis and Gilbert, when we're together, and that's where this podcast came from, because we literally invite people to be in elk camp with us. It was a way for us to be together and share what we know with the other people about life as well as about elk hunting, right? So, you know, uh, people need to understand that, you know, when you come into a Corey Jacobson or a Donnie Drake elk camp, you're you're privy to something special that they don't have to let out, that you don't have to let out to anybody else. And people would love to be a part of that. And, and you've been able to see that when you guys have brought people in to be in with you or uh, a person to have that opportunity for them. And what's cool about that is it kind of, it's also a learning moment. It's also a teaching thing because people see how your personalities work, how you guys work together, and they kind of get to take a little bit of a look at themselves as to, well, what's it going to take for me to have that with somebody else or, or to make something work? How can I step back a little bit or where do I need to step forward? Or like you said, where does that conversation have to happen? And it doesn't have to be, you know, you're right. I mean, Chav and I are the same way. Unless we have something, unless we're talking about, oh, where are we going to go scout or what's happening with the show or what's happening with, you know, uh, the newest elk call or something like that. And, and we have those common things that we're like trying to find out where they're at or the guys when we're trying to prepare for an upcoming hunt. Other than that, we can go a long time without talking or be in the vehicle without talking because we get it. But if you are feeling something wrong, if you are not, like Corey says, happy inside and there's something eating at you, well, like you said, man, you got to have that big boy talk. Bring it out. Say why. It could be you as much as them, but bring it out. Or it can be a misperception, misconception, the things that go. Don't play the drama card, man. Just look. Come out. Say, is there a problem? Here's what I'm feeling blah, blah, blah. If it's not going to work it out, maybe we should do something else because there is no reason to go through life miserable. And finding those good things, is it just makes things so much better. You have that confidence, you have that caring, you have that unselfishness. And when you start doing this for the right reasons, for 
those types of things, for those types of memories, for that type of sharing, all that other stuff, you know, it, it takes care of itself. And, you know, you know as well as I do because you work with young people that if they play and they compete for the love of competition, wins takes care of itself. You don't go out there, focus on the win. You go out there to compete hard, right? Yeah. To, to love the game and and that's what um you guys have brought to this and and that's one reason that i approached you about having you on here because that's what i wanted to celebrate about Corey and about donnie about elk 101 was that kind of special thing that you guys bring to the table and and that other people that i hope that they see it more than just the end it's it's trophies are forgotten you know, I mean, you guys have, all of us have taken elk, and sometimes I stop and I try to think about, oh, when I got this certain one or that one. But it's those hardships, it's those memories, it's those laughs, it's those things that are going to carry on and and that those stories are the ones that are going to be told. They could care less whether the bull in 1990 had six points and or seven points or scored this or that but they're going to remember the grind that you went through, right? Yep, definitely. Yeah. So, um, guys, thank you so much for this. Is is there anything that you'd like to add that you think people out there would like to hear or not like to hear or need to hear uh, on this or anything at all? No. Donnie, you got a dad joke? I don't have. Oh my gosh! <laughs> no, th this is supposed to be uh, hunting. Supposed to be fun. It's not something that we have to do. Right. It's something that we get to do. And if you're pursuing it, it's because you want to do it and you get to do it. It should not be any kind of a burden, or it should be fun from start to finish and we get to do it amen to that right yep and uh so for all you guys that are and gals that are listening out there um i i hope this is this has been something different you know it um it's not me talking about calling it's not Corey talking about calling it's nothing about strategies as far as an animal is concerned this is strategies in life this is strategies in relationships these are things to make things more enjoyable on this journey whatever your journey is it, ours happens to be we love to chase elk so that's one of the reasons you listen but I hope this brings something to you and helps you out not only in just with a hunting partner, but you have those partnerships with your kids as well. You have those partnerships with your wife or your your husband, your spouse out there. And I think those are the things that really make our life special. And I hope that you're you're seeing, you know, for those of you that came on here to see uh, uh, Corey and Donnie, I hope you got something special out of this because these men bring something to the table other than um uh, an animal that they put on the ground they bring so much more and i hope you realize that if you're having trouble realizing that stop and really reevaluate some things as to why you're out there because it's going to make your life so much better so until the next time that we get together y'all you know keep believing and achieving keep dreaming of the screaming but most of all keep grinding we'll see you next time thanks guys appreciate hey, it thank you us.